How do you spot the only vegan in the room? Don't worry, I'll tell you. <laughs> or so the joke goes. I decided to go vegan for January. Veganuary is, I think, what some people call it. Um, I decided to do this because veganism is everywhere at the moment. It's, if you know, certainly trendy, and there seems to be, judging by social media, a lot of interest from cyclists. So I wanted to give it a go to see, you know, how it would affect my cycling. Would it be detrimental to my performance? You know, would I get a, become a better cyclist? Would I lose weight? Would I, you know, be able to to do it? Um, so I've decided to give it a go. I don't feel especially qualified to talk about the ethical um, animal welfare side of veganism. Um, I mean, I sort of guess I like animals, but I, I think that the environmental argument for veganism is incredibly strong. Um, it wasn't something I was aware of, but because I was going to be doing this veganism thing, I thought I'll read up on it and try and educate myself a bit. And I I didn't know that that the environmental impact of the meat industry was so big. So if you don't know, it's, it's worth having a look. I'd suggest you go and, and check it out here. I won't preach here, but um, you know, put simply, using creating meat, beef in particular, is an incredibly inefficient um, use of the world's resources and the, the cattle population of the world alone requires uh, more food than the entire human population. So you could effectively eradicate famine. And the UN has even done reports on, on the impact of, uh, of, of the meat and dairy industry as being terrible for climate change and also you know, well-established and respected institutions such as the, the University of Oxford have, have produced peer-reviewed scientific literature that also sort of condemns meat and says that more people should should eat less meat and more plants basically. Morning. As you can see this is genuinely morning and I'm genuinely battered. <laughs> and I've also a bit ill. With regards to what I eat for breakfast being vegan, some things have changed but some things haven't changed. So I still eat porridge, I just don't make it with milk. Um, well, cow's milk. Instead, there's loads of other sort of nut milks and things out there which actually taste really nice. Um, and so I'm making some porridge now. There we go. And coffee, still the same. The biggest change for me is that I can't eat eggs, uh, which I'd often have as breakfast on like low carb days. So I'm missing eggs a lot, but um, I do really like eggs. But um, the other thing is Greek yogurt is a great source of sort of calcium and protein and it doesn't cost much money. And so I'd often put Greek yogurt a bit with porridge for a bit of added protein or sometimes I'd just have some Greek yogurt and some fruit and it's a healthy breakfast. But um, yeah, I can't have Greek yogurt so I've been missing that but fortunately I found some substitutes so I'll just get those now. This cocoa, coconut flavoured yogurt which is really really clean tasting it's really white um, and very very smooth like when you eat it, it's really nice but the problem with it is is it's a little bit expensive and it also doesn't really contain any protein so that's one thing to factor in but it's really nice uh, and then these Alpro ones as well which contain soya and they contain a lot more protein so they're pretty good to get some protein in I'm just gonna have my breakfast Hopefully wake up a bit. <laughs> Look at the state of me. <laughs> I'm a week into my vegan diet now. Um, and I'm just out for a training ride at the moment. And so far, I mean, being on a vegan diet, I'm having absolutely no problem fueling for rides. I mean, there's plenty of carbohydrates that are vegan, you know, fruit, oats. And so my breakfast that I have before rides is pretty much unchanged. My muscles seem to be aching a fair bit, more so than they normally would, I'd say, especially seeing as I haven't been doing really hard training. I feel a little bit lethargic as well. Um, at the moment, it's only a week in, so I'm not gonna put it down to a vegan diet. I think I'm, I may be fighting a sort of January bug off. I might have you know, caught some little virus or something and I'm fighting it off. It's not bad, but 
yeah I think that's probably more likely so so this is gonna be quite a big challenge for me but fortunately I've got some very useful friends who can help so I'm gonna go see one of them now and that's my friend Chris Bartlett or Dr Chris Bartlett um, who's actually a chef for Rafa in the Rafa cafe but he's worked in a two Michelin star kitchen before that but he's also uh, got a PhD in biochemistry and used to be a, a sort of uh, pro-continental cyclist as well so I mean don't ask me what kind of Venn diagram he fits in there <laughs> it's quite, quite a niche Venn diagram that he's, uh, he's in there but he's very knowledgeable about cycling and food and be quite interesting to talk to and hopefully you know get me eating some of the right sorts of things and give me some ideas about things I can eat myself so I'm here with my mate Chris now um, Chris veganuary you're, you're doing it as well right I have after your instruction <laughs> how, are you, how, are you, how are you finding it uh, it's, it's been okay um, I've mostly been away uh, traveling is quite difficult and where, I, where did you travel to? I was up in Yorkshire, but I've fallen afoul two, two times, what? unintentionally. What? I oh, know. You've broken it already, you're yeah. like a week, you do it like a week. <laughs> Several days in. <laughs> how, how did you break it? Uh, one was a really not very pleasant petrol station, where it was either crisps, mouldy <laughs> apples, or something that looked, <laughs> like it was a bounce ball. A bounce ball. And it had whey protein. So do you think, because you obviously like raced at continental level and you know a lot about food, do you think you could race at that level and be vegan? Uh, absolutely. I in fact think that, I mean knowing what I know now, I would be better than what I used to be. So, I mean you kind of believe the hype of a lot of things. I was using recovery drinks often, uh, protein powders for a supplement and vitamins, uh, a vitamin pill um, so many times a week. But those, that you, vitamin pills especially, um, it's another reason why you should eat whole foods is that you can get all of this stuff through your diet. Yeah. And if you're taking a high dose of an antioxidant or a vitamin, that suppresses the adaptation to exercise, which is obviously something you don't want. I mean, it lowers oxidative stress. Um, but that's what your body is adapting to. So if you go out for a six hour ride or do a criterium, there's a huge amount of oxidative stress that your body then has to adapt and change. And that's what drives per, uh, performance increase. So having, yeah, having a high concentration of antioxidants is gonna suppress that. I think another misconception that people have is um, that vegan, eating vegan is boring. And they're like, it just means you just get to graze on like a field of grass outside while everyone else is having flavour so nice food, Chicken. yeah, exciting food. Like, Chicken nuggets. I mean, when you're, when you think, oh, I'm going to come up with like a vegan dish or I'm going to make some vegan food, do you think, do you think of vegan food as boring or do you, do you think it's I, like I think it's more interesting. Right. Um, and there's so much wonderful produce out there that you can cook with and ways, uh, and ingredients that we might not be familiar with. So miso, Marmite are wonderful, delicious things. Uh, mushrooms as is well. Is marmite vegan? Yeah. Oh, well, it's, I didn't it's, even know that. It's yeast extract. Them. It's dead. It's dead organisms. So I don't know. It's a oh, yeah. yeast is an there. organism. So and we're killing it. I bet there's some vegans out there who don't eat marmite because it's killing yeast. <laughs> <laughs> there will be. I bet there is. I heard there's one about figs. Like figs, some don't consider to be vegan. Really? Because to pollinate, there's a specific type of wasp that has to go in. To the plant to pollinate it and the wasp stays there. I would be very surprised if either one of us saw any significant difference because we both eat very well anyway. Yeah. We're not having loads of junk food, uh, we know what we should be eating, we know how to get it, we both cook. Not big drinkers. No, pretty much teetotal. <laughs> Let's go for a ride in a few weeks after we've been vegan dieting and see how our performance is going, see how we're, we're riding. Mates before steaks. <laughs> <laughs> So we're just out on a cycling weekly video shoot right now and uh, it's come to lunchtime. So we're gonna go and get some lunch. So, vegan problems. <laughs> does this pub we're going to for lunch, does it have any vegan options? What can you eat? Wait, what, what can you eat? Well, there's some grass over there. <laughs> I can go graze. They're like, no, is there like 
Well, what's the menu looking like? Okay, let me read it to you. Um, right. Gowan steak with double egg. <laughs> chips. Do you have chips? Slow roasted pork belly. What are the, okay, what are the vegan options? <laughs> I don't know what you're going to have. I don't think there are <laughs> vegan options. Uh, starters, you can have a salad mozzarella with tomato. Can't have mozzarella. Can't have it. Okay. Avocado, can you have that? Yeah, can I have avocado, okay. yeah. None of them have like a V next to them. <laughs> like there's N nothing. <laughs> there's 15 main options here. None we may have, have to find a different, <laughs> we may have to find a different place to go. <laughs> Literally, you can, see, you can see I'm like scrolling down. I think we might have to find somewhere else. Plowman's without the cheddar. Or the bread. Or the egg. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. Look, what vegan shepherd's pie. Oh, we're going for that. Let's go that. I told you I'd find you a Oh, mate. Three. Vegan shepherd's pie. We Done. So We're having it. Done. Got my uh, cottage pie here. My vegan cottage pie. It's made from lentils and it's got sweet potato on top. And a side of peas. What do you make of that, Andrew? You've got an actual real well, pie. pie so, uh... Oh, I'm jealous of videographer Andrew's real pie. All right. Just out for a ride at the moment. I'm about... A week and a half into my veganuary experiment. To be honest, I'm feeling a bit sluggish on the bike. Right, I'm, um, I think I've sort of been struggling, I've been counting all my sort of calories and watching my exact protein intake and I've been struggling to sort of get the protein in that I, that I normally eat. It's different for everyone, right? You know, the amount of protein you need is probably different to the amount of protein that I need, but through, you know, doing lots of training over the years and paying close attention to my diet, I've sort of worked out what works for me. And at the moment, I'm struggling to find that protein. I, I, I don't think it's impossible to get the protein in. I just think it's, because it's all new to me, I, I need to develop new strategies to get that protein in. So I'm gonna try and get hold of some um, vegan protein supplements, because there's a load on the market. So we'll get hold of them and see how it goes. Another thing I've, found over the first sort of week and a half is that I've actually put on weight and this is because I've been trying to get in protein similar to the levels of protein that I'd eat on a non-vegan diet and, and I've been looking at the, the sources the well-established vegan protein sources like chickpeas and beans and um, lentils and that sort of thing I find that when you eat chickpeas and nuts and things like that there's inevitably lots of other calories that comes with it to get the same amount of protein um, as you would from say some chicken or some fish I, I found I've actually been eating more than I need just in a bit to get the protein in as a consequence I've been eating more calories and I've actually put on a bit of weight which is a little bit depressing I guess it shows that going vegan doesn't guarantee that you're gonna lose weight you know at the end of the day a calorie is a calorie so I've turned to supplements, but fortunately there's loads of vegan supplements out there. So I've got a load of different ones here that I've sort of been trying and these have really helped to get my protein levels up to um, that of a non-vegan diet. It's important to point out as well that using supplementation on a vegan diet is something that British Cycling actually recommends if you are training and being a cyclist. If you're not an athlete, if you're not training, then I think you don't necessarily need that much protein, but I found that I'm feeling really sluggish without getting additional protein. So fortunately, I've got some supplements. So I'm gonna just show you these quickly. So we've got um, some almond protein here from Nature's Plus, some paleo protein, that one's quite good. It's good because it's got a complete amino acid profile in there. My favorite one is that I've tried is this Elite Complete Vegan Protein, because it, pretty much doesn't really taste of anything. So it's quite easy to mix it into other things and then add some flavor from, you know, some blueberries or add some vanilla to it or something. I've got some hemp protein powder. This is a popular thing for uh, vegans. Um, it ruined my porridge. And I've also got some spirulina powder as well, which tastes like soil. So I've tried a few, just some of them I'm, I don't get along with. Obviously it's very personal, but the one I like the best is this one, this Health Spam Complete Vegan Protein. Through chatting with Chris, I've been kind of inspired uh, about the possibilities of food. He's, he's showed me a lot of things. And also I spoke to Alan Murchison, the performance chef, and he also 
uh, gave me a few tips and bits of advice of things I can eat. So I've mainly been going for Thai and Indian food when I've been cooking. Um, also made a banging tagine. And it's things with like lots of herbs and spices and vegetables and cuisines that aren't too reliant on dairy and, and you know, you can substitute the meat. It's, I've, I've been enjoying the things I've been eating, to be honest. I mean, I'm missing eggs and things like that, but I've been enjoying the food and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really good. Um, there's no sort, you know, a lot of dishes don't feel like there's a compromise. But I'm gonna go for a ride now with, uh, with Chris. So I'm just uh, currently on the motorway. I'm not driving on the motorway, I'm at Warwick Services. And um, this weekend I'm driving up to uh, my mate Nick's stag do. And this is gonna be quite fun because I think it's gonna present a whole load of problems for my vegan diet. So I feel I've got to the point where I'm pretty much in control of it and I've developed strategies and coping mechanisms in order to make sure I'm getting vegan stuff and getting the nutrients I need and finding things to eat basically. Because it is quite a big lifestyle change. However, I'm now going into an environment that is totally not conducive to a vegan diet, which is a stag do. Like we're going out for a meal tonight and then we're going out in Liverpool. And so far it started all right though, because I'm on the, on the road driving up to Liverpool and I've managed to get some vegan friendly porridge at Starbucks and my coffee as well from Starbucks is good. It's, it's uh, an almond milk latte. So there you go, tastes good. Yeah, must press on now and uh, see what happens at this stag do. <laughs> Vegan stag do, mate. Vegan stag do. Don't put vegan me. I don't want to be on one of your vlogs. <laughs> we're, we're with cycling Jeremy Clarkson here. My intellectual property. <laughs> going for an Italian. So, God knows what. Hopefully, there's some kind of option that I can eat. Bearing in mind, Italian food called oh. cheese and meat. Cheesy, what's your star? Nice. Meatballs. Meaty meatballs, mate. There we go. <laughs> that looks good. What's that? Yeah, no, it's, it's not. It's not vegan. No. A chips vegan. Chips, chips have got to be vegan, I think. This looks like a a pizza, but without cheese on it. Chips are vegan, aren't they? There we go. Overcooked in uh, goose fat. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> you look like, like a ginger Marco Pantani. <laughs> Perfectly honest, my pizza wasn't as good as an actual real pizza with cheese on it. But, you know, it was alright. Right. Fortunately, beer, well most of the beer out there, is vegan. So I'm gonna get on the beers now. Yeah, woo! That's what they are. Extremely error. Are they even what? Yeah. <laughs> if, this, if this night ends up on Saturday weekly's vlog, I will not be pleased. Hey, it'll end up being like five seconds worth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In terms of vegan ride food, it's not really been a problem for me because there's loads of bars out there on the market that are sort of gluten, wheat, dairy free. Um, you know, there's these primal ones I've been trying, they're all right. And these Meridian ones um, as well, they're all really good. So there's loads of different flavors and they're generally made from like nuts and dates. These are the kinds of things that I was eating on rides before I did Veganuary. So that hasn't really been that big a transition, a bigger change for me. My favorites are sort of naked bars. They do bake well to that flavor. And that's really nice, I like that. Um, and I've also, tried since going vegan i tried these squirrel sisters ones which are a lesser known brand but um they're really nice as well they're quite expensive but they're yeah they're really nice you're all right chris Golden. right we're just riding to the bottom of piss hill now just out of henley and uh it's a really long steady hill the average is about three percent and uh, it's perfect for a 20 minute test so, 
that's what Chris is going to do to see if his vegan diet for a month has uh, how it's impacted his power output. I was going to do one as well, but <laughs> I've managed to get out of it because I'm still recovering from the flu. So I don't want to go too hard, it's still on my chest a little bit. So, what was your power? Uh, 383. And, and how, how does that compare to what you'd normally do? Uh, by this time of year, a little bit higher. Uh, 370 is typical. Are you putting that down to a plant based diet? Absolutely. It's, uh, kind of, it's the only thing for me. He's cramped and blown, he's in the post days. Morning. Today is my first day of not being a vegan or not having to be a vegan because it's the 1st of February and I have decided that for breakfast I am having some poached eggs on toast because I've really, really missed not having eggs. Eggs are one of my favourite foods in the world. I've missed it so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have some eggs. Sorry vegans who are hoping I was going to stay vegan. <laughs> I am delighted to be having some eggs. So, there we go. I love poached eggs, they're one of my favourite things in the entire world. <laughs> I'm not sure I could give them up. I'm not sure I need to either, so. Look at that. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. It's the uh, end of Veganuary now, and what I'm really craving, I've been craving for ages, I'm not, because I've gone a month without having anything, without any cheese, so I'm really craving a pizza, so, I'm going to go get a pizza, because I really want one, and, uh, yeah, it's been a while, so let's do it. One thing that I should point out with my takeaway pizza is that I am meeting veganism halfway, in that I have gone for a vegetarian pizza. So yeah, there you go. So what have I learned from trying out veganism? Well, firstly, I think it's totally possible to be a vegan and to be a serious cyclist. Um, I had absolutely no problem fueling on the bike and once I was taking protein supplements, I found absolutely no problem in sort of recovering from workouts. I did get the flu uh, <laughs> towards the end of January, but I'm not putting that down to, to being on a vegan diet, you know, plenty of people have got the flu who weren't on vegan diets. Um, so, you know, it's hard for me to gauge that. But I think personally, ultimately going 100% vegan is not for me. The biggest challenge I've faced while doing this, and I have found it hard, um, has been mental, not physical. There are, there are several foods that I like to eat that aren't vegan and you know, not, not eating them sort of only really made me feel miserable. Um, also, I didn't feel noticeably fitter or healthier upon going plant-based. I think, anecdotally, a lot of people will say that they feel great going on a vegan diet. Um, and that's great if you do, but everyone's different, I guess. And I think my non-vegan diet is, is very healthy. I eat a lot of vegetables, I, I cook a lot, I don't eat much processed food. So I didn't really feel like a big difference. I, you know, felt the same really. Um, however, I do, I do think veganism has rubbed off on me though. Um, I think going forward now, I am certainly going to be eating less meat and dairy. I can cut back on it. Um, in fact, you know, I feel like I, I could cut my meat consumption in half quite, quite easily. Um, you know, already this week I've sort of made a vegan bolognese and it was, uh, really good. I think having learned about how positive veganism is for the environment, I definitely encourage anyone who's thinking of doing it, who's a cyclist, to go for it. You know, why not? Um, you know, it's great for the environment and I also I'm completely confident that it can, it can totally be done and be a cyclist and it won't affect your performance in a negative way. So yeah, all good. But uh, on to competition time. So Thanks for everyone that commented last week. Um, There's some great comments and as ever I enjoyed reading all of them. Um, unfortunately I don't have time to read them all out but it was great reading about your sort of cycling goals and objectives and uh, 
I quite enjoyed Josh, Josh Greenwood's comment. He said that his goal was to make it into this vlog. At 9.36, you can see me wave. So go back, watch the vlog, and you'll see it's quite funny. <laughs> He's like photobombing me. Um, but I'm going to give the prize to uh, Alan Carapinar because he commented first, and I said that I would award the prize one day to someone who commented first. I'm a man of my word, so I have. Uh, so he commented saying, first, I wanted to comment first, and I did it. Quite a cycling goal. Mission completed. Yeah, well, there you go. Quite <laughs> made me laugh, so uh, good work. Good work, Alan, uh, or Aileen. I hope I've pronounced your name correctly. Sorry if I haven't. Um, but this week's prize is uh, a surprise. That, that basically means I haven't got one yet, <laughs> but I will get one. So, um, trust me, trust me. I'm a man of my word, right? Yeah. Um, so be, to be in with a chance of winning next week's mega surprise prize, then all you have to do is comment with what, what you think about veganism. I'm interested to know what you think about veganism. Um, and, you know, as a cyclist, would you try it? And, you know, do you think it's good or bad? Do you think you can be a, a part-time vegan like I think I'm going to try and be. <laughs> um, let me know in the comment section. It'd be interesting to, to get your opinions. But um, until then, don't forget to subscribe to the Cycling Weekly channel and uh, I'll see you later.